We will start the second video on the 5090 paper 62 November 2020 and this will is only having question 2 and 3 which have been explained. In the previous video question 1 has been done for you. Starting with question 2, the photograph shows the bone from the upper leg between the hip and the knee of two different adult humans. The bones are labeled C and D. So it shows the bones from the upper leg between the hip and the knee and two different adult humans. The bones are labeled C and D. So magnification they've given you 0 0.17 and they've given you a picture of two bones. Use the table to describe two differences between bones C and D. So you have to give me two differences between bones C and D. Now that was very simple. Uh, this one is shorter. Bone C is shorter. I'm just writing on it just to explain it to you. And this one is of course longer. So shorter and longer. Then this one is curved. And this one is, well, this is curved. This is uh, straighter. Now, how do you use these words? That is, of course, a problem with children who are uh, struggling with the vocabulary. Then it has this, you can see this very interesting, this groove at the bottom. So there's a groove at the bottom. This is all I'm talking about C. And this does not have, so no groove. course I don't expect you to write it here I expect you to write it here in this box but I was just explaining it to you on the diagram so that you would know what you were supposed to write in this uh, box and I'm just going to do it for you at the box and then you can check it out I'm not asking you to write this third point but what I mean any two of these so this is one line was correct or this one's correct so if ever you gave me any two of these all these three are the various mark scheme points but you had to do this whole thing. You had to get this right. The whole thing had to be right for you to get this one mark. So this one mark was for this whole comparison which you had to do. And that had to be right to be able to get that one mark. And the next question was make a large drawing of bone C. And I always say to you just think as if you were as if you were tracing it out. And you need to draw this. It says draw, make a large drawing of bone C. So you'd have to occupy this whole space right from here to here. It has to be a large diagram. And all you have to do is draw it as you see it, not what you are thinking, but as you see it. And I'll try to do a job of it, but I might not be very good at it. But there's nothing, they're not looking at that. They just want you the drawing should be at least 10 centimeter long. At least 10 centimeter long means that you, you can't have just a small diagram like this here and make the bone here. You have to have a big diagram like 10 centimeters. So you can't have just a tiny little diagram here in one corner of this whole page. You realize you have this whole page given to you. So this whole area has to be occupied. So at least 10 centimeter long, at least. It can be more than that. Then clean... You have to draw clean lines. You don't have to do any shading. Please remember there's no shading. This is not an art, this thing. So you have to draw it. It has to be a clear line. And then you have to draw it like this. And then, of course, so there should be no broken lines. It says clear, clean outer line drawn with a sharp pencil and continuous line and no shading. Then rounded shape of head, then groove at the base, this groove at the base, and curved shaft and particular structure indicated beneath the neck of the head. So, I mean, I'll have to improve this here, and then you had to make this diagram. So, I'll just try to make it, and then I'll just show it to you. Now, I've tried to make a diagram which looks like the bone, and you have to see it that it, you know, it has a little 
wider area here and it had a uh, so you have to keep in mind the proportions of it. How long was it? How long, how how big was this head? How was this length here? And how much was this area? So you had to be clear in drawing it in the right proportion. But otherwise, please don't say that you're not good at drawing because some of you say you're not good at drawing, but they're not expecting you to do a really a very good job of it. They expect you to just draw what you see. You're not supposed to make a very, very, it's not a fine arts uh, exam or something like that. So this was for how many marks? This was for five marks. So you see the five marks are for all these drawings and the five marks are to for you to really figure this out. What is drawing at least 10 centimeter? Uh, clean outer line drawn with a sharp pencil and continuous line. No shading. Then rounded shape of head then groove at the base, then the curved shaft and the circular structure indicated beneath the neck of the head. So that is all what you were asked. Then on the, on the photograph, on the photograph measure the length of bone D. So this is the photograph. So you want to measure the length of bone D. So please measure the length of bone D here on this uh, diagram. And this was about 79 millimeter. Now, use your measurements to calculate the actual length of bone D and show your working. And this was going to get you another three marks. So that was an important three marks is that you had to first find out the foot on the photograph, which is the previous photograph, which I've just shown you that was 79 millimeters. Now, if you look at this photograph, what does it say here? What does it say here is magnification is 0 0.17. And this was the length that we measured, which was 79 millimeter. And the magnification was 0 0.17. This is the magnificent given in this here. X times 0 0.17. So basically what you had to do is that this was the magnification. So this is X means magnification. So you knew it on the photograph, you measured it was 79. So 79 divided by 0 0.16 is 464.7. We round it off to 465. And this would be in millimeter or if you give it to me in centimeter, then you'd convert it into centimeter. So this is how you would actually calculate it. You just divide it by the magnification which was given in the question. And then you figure this out. That finishes question two. Now we go on to question three. Milk contains casein, a protein that gives it a white color. A student tested the effect of a protease enzyme on this protein. He marked a cross on the base of a small glass beaker with a wax pencil. He knew that if he added milk to the beaker while looking down on the cross, the X would become less clear until it could not be seen through the milk. So what he did was, this is the beaker and he marked an X at the base of it. And this is, you see, I'm looking at it. It's not the beaker, I'm looking at it from the top. So he marked an X on the base of a small glass beaker with a wax pencil. He knew that if he added milk to the beaker while looking down on the cross, the X would become less clear until it could not be seen through the milk. Naturally, if you pour milk into this, if you pour milk into this, then you won't be able to see the X at the bottom, which was somewhere at the, here. This is the bottom of the beaker. And you had the X at the bottom of the beaker. He, um, he wanted to measure the volume of milk that was needed to make the X no longer visible. He wanted to measure the volume of milk that would be needed to make the X no longer visible. Suggest a method that would be used to determine this volume of milk. And then let's read the B part of the question. I always say is that you read the whole question and then you start working on it. Don't start writing immediately. When he added proteins to the milk, it digested the casein. As a result, the milk become, became colorless after five minutes and he could see the X through it. 
A fruit contains a protease enzyme. Not all protease enzymes can digest casein. Use a method similar to the one above. Design an investigation to find out whether this fruit protease will digest casein. So, you've read this part of the question. Now, you go on to the next part of the question. And that is, of course, the end of it. So, there's a four mark. So, this was a seven mark question in which it was just, a, the, usually we have two questions, but this one, it was a three marks question. So, now you have to look at it very sensibly and sort of then start replying it. And you have to reread it again. So, I will just pause it. Uh, you pause it here. And then you reread the question. And then you look at what I have to say about the mark scheme. Now, in this part of the question, it says, suggest a method that you could use to determine the volume of milk. So, there are about three different methods which you could have used. And I will start discussing those with you. The first method was that you write the x on the base of the uh, beaker and now you add milk first one I've told you is we will add the milk number one until the X is not visible so you keep on adding the milk until the x is not visible and then you read this off this is 400 so you read the volume because this was a it was a calibrated beaker so you had the volumes on the side of it so add the milk until x not visible and read the volume which is on the side this, is, this volume is given on the side if you look at it this volume is given on the side second method was that you add milk to the beaker until the x was no longer visible. So you had written the x at the bottom and you added the milk till the it was and then of course you poured this into a measuring cylinder and then you see how much it was covering up and then you read it from the measuring cylinder. So add milk to the beaker until X no longer visible. Pour this milk into a measuring cylinder and measure the volume of milk in the measuring cylinder. Got it? First you add the X, then you add the milk here. And then you see when the X is no longer visible. Then you, because this was not, there was no calibration on the beaker. So then you poured this into the measuring cylinder and then you measured it. So this was the second method. Then we come on to another method. The third method was that you put a known volume of milk, say this much milk in this measuring cylinder. So known volume of milk in a measuring cylinder or a syringe or a burette. And then you add this milk to the beaker. And of course you've written the X here. And you see that how long will it take for the X to disappear. So say this was the level. But there is no calibration on the beaker. Now you know if you had say 100 ml in this. And now 30 ml is left behind. Thirty ml is left behind. So you know 70 ml went in here and this 70 ml would be the volume which is uh, makes it uh, the cross not visible. So there were three methods by which you could do this and you could have written any one of those. Right? The B part of this question has to be reread again. A fruit contains a protease enzyme. A fruit, so it could be any fruit, apple, guavas, mangoes. Not all protease enzymes can digest casein. Using a method similar to the one above, design an investigation to find out whether this fruit protease will digest casein. So it's very simple. You prepare the fruit, 
you take a fixed mass of fruit and you chop it up or you use the juice from that fruit and you take up the beaker and uh, in the beaker you add the milk and you've written the x at the bottom so you add enough milk then the x does not become visible then you add the fruit to the milk now you observe the milk plus the fruit solution so you've got the milk and you've got the fruit solution in it as well so milk plus fruit solution and then you observe it you keep on looking at it and after five minutes or seven minutes or ten minutes it will become clear if if the milk becomes clear the enzyme is effective if it is not clear it's not effective and of course because this is enzyme activity so you would keep the temperature constant using a water bath so that the enzyme activity is not disturbed we cannot have any changes in the temperature because that would affect the enzyme activity now that completes the seven mark third question which usually there isn't one but sometimes in some papers there is a, a third question of a few marks very few marks so i hope this has been a helpful uh, exercise please remember that whenever you're doing an atp paper you must read the whole question and then think you're doing this in the lab and how you would do it in the lab. Would you use a beaker? Would you use a measuring cylinder? Would you use a flask? You must know the names of the ordinary simple laboratory apparatus. What is a petri dish? What is a beaker? What is a measuring cylinder? What is a burette? What is a syringe? So please remember this and please prepare for the ATP which will be of course taking place in the October exam. So let's hope so. Uh, we have the exams and we can do all the exams as per schedule and thank you very much.